Today, Manu speaks about cultural experiences, education in Malaysia and America. Stone Except to South America and Antarctica, I've been everywhere, including Iceland. Mm. There is no other me. <laughs> uh, I'm not that special, but mediocre, but... Shut up lah. Uh, no, in the sense that done all the other things. Do you know that I was also a diver? <laughs> Soon? I was also, a, yeah, a sprinter on track. And I played all the games and I was even a basketball coach. And I played in the PJ and KL leagues. <laughs> I've combined all this and I take my theatre experience and take my international travels and my academic studies and all that. See what kind of... How did I do it all in one lifetime? <laughs> Answer, don't get married. <laughs> if not, your wife will control you and say... <laughs> <laughs> so what fueled your travels then? If you were interested in earth signs, you were interested in seeing things and experiencing things. So. Where did you go? My school days were very important in that because mm. I, was, I was a scout in the scout movement from primary school mm. right up to the time when I became a teacher, I was a scout master. Mm. So if you were to include the number of years, that, that covers the entire growing up awareness period. Okay. So I was, without realizing it, I was close to nature and mm. I went on trails, followed streams, and as a Boy Scout, and um, there are certain badges like you, you get proficiency badges, as yeah, they call yeah. it. And um, there are certain things you have to have in order to go on to the next rank to become a King Scout, a Royal Scout. Mm -hmm. So, and part of it included how to deal with nature with just one knife, no money in your pocket because money doesn't work anywhere but your knowledge of what you can eat, what you cannot mm, eat, yes, what to yes, avoid, yes. what not to avoid, seeing signs, knowing when it's going to rain, how to take shelter, all those things become part of your education and part of, you know, yeah. you, you will be the one who will suffer if you don't follow those, if you don't understand that. Wow, this one looks nice, you've got that put in your mouth. Ah, <laughs> you don't <laughs> know what that man. berry is. So, you, you've got and your interest in nature becomes bigger and bigger and wider and wider. And um, then coming from my hometown, which was in a valley, Ipo, the Kinta Valley, surrounded by so much lush hills and mountains, and Cameron Highlands is just like a couple of hours away. You know? So, and then you have Taiping, the mountains there, and then you have Pankow Island, the ocean there, I mean the Straits of Malacca, the sea there, and Penang, which is just about at that time three hours. Now it's about one and a half hours. So you had access to, to the land environment. So traveling, cycling, and all that to, you know, was easier. We could actually cycle all the way to Pankow, for example, yes. carrying your backpack and stuff, and camp there. Things which today's parents will say, no, it's so dangerous, traffic, you know, highway, you know, too costly, uh, there's no supermarket there. And you got to go backwards in time to the 50s and 60s to understand the scope of life. We have become independent as a nation. There was a sense of freedom. There's a sense of you can do things without, you know, it's, it's, it's all part of you. The environment is part of you. It wasn't surprising that I took geography as my first, as my discipline when I went to university. And that gave you the facts, geology and geography. And that also included a lot of other things physically, like going to investigate this or going on research for that. Mm. And uh, now you're grown up adults with other people, 18, 19, 20 years old, that age group. So you do more. You climb, literally you climb higher mountains, for example. And I said, I cannot call myself Malaysian or Malayan at that time mm. without having visited every one of the states. So that's where I started. So it took me a few years, actually, 
before I went there. By the time Malaysia was born, now Sabah Sarawak, and at that time Brunei, I had an occasion to be, when I was an undergraduate, to be part of a team, the first team of survey researchers invited by the Sultan of Brunei from the University of Malaya and the Department of Geography and we sent the first team of people to do the first census returns on the Brunei. How long the roads were, how many rivers there were, oh, wow. how many this, how many that, how many this, you know, so that they'll have for the first time statistics on their own country. I was interested in now going overseas, you know, going to Brunei. Of course, we went to Sarawak a little bit, a bit to Sabah and all that but they were called not Borneo at the time. My interest in that part of the world came up, even before Malaysia was formed. So, now I'm now a traveller, a certified traveller, teacher, besides my father was a teacher also. Right, I'm not going away from the story, but it helps explain why it was just a matter of time when I would explore other places. Yeah. I'm of Indian origin, but I haven't been to India. I must go to India. But by that time, I've already been to America, and so it was coming back from America in one of the trips that I said, I must stop over in India. And imagine the New Delhi airport when I arrived there. I was so happy. Here, my forefathers come from this big, vast place. I know all about India from my grandparents and all, but I have never been to India. It was a culture shock. Mm -hmm. They didn't consider me as an Indian. Yeah. They see that Malaysian, you know. And then they talk among themselves. I can understand what they're saying, but they're actually saying something very rude about me and very crude about me. The way I dress and, you know, I, I, I'm not from one of their kind, sort of. And here I'm saying, I'm one of your kind, I'm coming back to, like, being like, pora attitude towards me. Yes. And this Porta attitude just sort of like bounced me off from India a bit. I travelled to India all by myself without any help or anything and finally from New Delhi went down and finally ended up in Tamil Nadu where my ancestors came from. And there I met also, I finally made contact with um, relatives I'm, I didn't know existed but I was told that you know in this particular village you know, that's where my grandmother came from. Maybe there are some people there, go and check it out. So I went and checked out. And then there's the reverse. There is like, you are one of us, you know. You come and share everything that we have. Yes, the water comes from the well. Yeah, but you boil it. That's what they've been yeah, doing for thousands of years. Yeah. So everything, they're happy. But they have no, not that kind of need we urban folks had. Yeah. Here I was wearing kind of like shoes and, you know, jeans. They've heard of jeans, but they've never seen jeans. Like, um, I remember after my first trip, on the day I was supposed to leave from Madras, mm. I was going to go to the airport. I just had a few hours before the taxi comes. One conclusion came up in my head. The people out here, the millions of them, and I are the same. We are both called Indians. But beyond that, there is nothing else which is the same. And today, yeah. some <laughs> efforts up there are saying, itu pun tak betul tau. Pendatang? Ya, orang pendatang. Makulan. I haven't born heard here that in my so long. blood. <laughs> I'm Malaysian. In my heart, I'm Malaysian. You don't take that one away from me, I'll kill you. If you take that from me. That's, that's the kind of generation I come from. 1968, where do I go straight? Oh, th this part I have to tell them. You know? I was playing the king and I in Ipoh. I was selected to represent Malaysia out of 10 other countries, there were 10 Asians, Australian and New Zealand, 10 individuals who were called student leaders at that time, exceptional students from that country, so to speak. Yes, I was academically okay. 
I was more than okay. And um, besides, so I got to be the, the, the rep for Malaysia. Okay. But I had to go a bit late. In fact, they had sent a car to pick me up after the final night, take off makeup, just came home, take a shower, say goodbye to my parents, go straight to KL, at that time, Subang Airport. In the morning, the flight. And that's how I left. Where did you go? Um, Which part of America? This award was to go... I went to 16 states. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, that's, but oh, that's when I landed, my, my, the place where I was going to have a homestay, which will sort of like get me into America, would you believe, was Chattanooga, Tennessee. Oh, no way. <laughs> and it's not just Chattanooga, Tennessee, but right there, just before I arrived, <laughs> about three days ago, just three days ago, there was Reverend Martin Luther King who was shot. Oh, that time. And the whole place, the whole of America just erupted and Tennessee was in gridlock. I could see my host family when I was coming down the steps of the plane, they were right at the corner there, I could see them. And they saw me, they looked at each other, I could see them looking at each other, husband and wife. They opened their mouth. I didn't know what that expression was, I found out later. He's black. <laughs> and in Tennessee, after Martin Luther King was shot, black and white, you know? I was in the middle of a civil strife. I was in the, I remember when I went to stay with them and they were expecting me and of course the neighbours were also expecting a Malaysian whom they thought would be something like you, you know, slit eyed, you know, brown skin, small size and talking like my orang Melayu, macam tu dah, you know. But here was this tall black, I just played the king and I was bald and you know, a black dude coming in to stay with a white family in the state of Tennessee in Chattanooga. Oh my God. I had a growing up in the next two weeks. Of course, everybody knew. I mean, finally, I was not the black guy from some downtown area coming to stay in the Watt suburbs and try to be a Watt man. But it was a slow learning and I was protected. But I learned mm. about America that way. And from there, that, that 10 of us who represented from Indonesia to Korea to Japan to Australia to New Zealand to India, we became a band of ourselves. I learned as much from my friends who were sure, all exceptional course, yeah. people who became later politicians and big leaders and stuff like that. And here I am, I ended up being an actor as well. <laughs> so we went to 16 states. At the time, I spent a whole week in Harvard, for example, the University of Tennessee, and um, three other institutions, prestigious universities, some small, they, they, they wanted a balance between small colleges and also Monmouth College, for example in Illinois, and then finally coming back. How would I know I can go into the Harvard Law School and go for a one week's lectures? To just to get to know what, what law, Harvard Law School was. How am I to know that, my God, New York is different on the street, man. And I went to see all the places that I could see at that time. So I had bits of America all over the country. Now I'm landing in Tokyo, it's already morning in Tokyo, and the taxi driver, a Japanese guy with very little English, oh, you come to the America, oh, you should go to the America. I couldn't understand what he was saying. Martin Luther King. No. Okay. When there, 
Then I realized from an English newspaper which I could get, Bobby Kennedy was oh, shot yeah. in California. I mean, just, just imagine, I'm, now I'm talking about it, I can see the irony of it all. It's almost like a writer writing a story and say, eh, can I like that. Yeah, I was bookended with Assassination. Assassinations of the highest order, not just an ordinary person. The highest number one in the black community and the highest number one is going to be the next president, Bob Kennedy, taking over his brother's place. That was America for me. What we know of America from Hollywood and from stories and stuff like that is only part of the story. Even today, where they're having so many problems still going, even in the last 24 hours, <laughs> the January 6th issue has come back again to haunt them, you know? Of course. Yeah. Of course. It's all, it's so, all the Senate now. that was my learning. I went back and went back and went back, and the last time I, I came back and I said, I don't think there is anything in America which will bring me back here anymore. Oh, really? Oh, I had uh, the, the expression done and dusted. Yeah. Traveled to all of America, lived in all kinds of states, had the best of friends and the best of love and sympathy and kindness, I must say that, of the ordinary people. Don't listen to the people on top there, the businessmen or the, or the politicians. Americans are just like Lots of people, just like very much like a smaller scale of Malaysia. I mean, a bigger scale of Malaysia. We are a small little example of how important it is to have differences shouldn't matter to the core, which is human kindness and human nature, to help live and let others live. That's what we are. Yeah. I wish we could. That's what Gloraga Malaysia is all about. Like, there's a new term, but you know, we started there during Tunku's time. Gloraga mankind lah. Yeah, it's all small manusia. Gloraga mankind. Gloraga manusia. Yes. Europe, I've been several times. Switzerland, I think about five, six times alone. And if you're in Switzerland, you can go all the way. It's right in the middle of Europe. Yes, I also learned German. Um, I've studied, studied formally three languages and then you add Spanish to it, you add Latin to it and you add Thai to it. I've learned six languages and they came in use when I was traveling. When was the last time you traveled? You went to Egypt, didn't you? The last recently? trip was to Egypt and mm. I traveled from the source of the, the Nile River. The geographer in you, right? The geographer mm -hmm. in Mila and go all the way through to Cairo and then to Alexandria. This time I went with family, so it was quite safe. They all took care of me, and, you know, oh, okay. stuff like that. So that was Egypt. But I've been to Egypt. I mean, I've been to Africa a few times. My first trip to, to, to Africa was to Morocco. Yeah, um, I never got there. Morocco and then hiking in the Sahara. Mm. Camping out in this in the Sahara, it did dead cold at night. You you feel like peeing. You have to come out of the tent to zip up the tent, and then you're standing out there, and nothing comes out. It's so bloody cold, but you know your bladder is full. <laughs> and then, when it does, this is to be deleted. Huh? Uh, when it does, you know the heat of your your pee. Yeah? <laughs> See the thing go up. It was, wow. it was such a sensation. It was just this quick, quick, up shivering. <laughs> then go into the, into, the, into the tent and then you're on the floor because there's covering on the floor, but you know, there you are. Oh. And the winds are howling in the, around you. That was Sarah. Then uh, we all, I mean, there was also a trip which the, the van takes you across and you come back and then that was Morocco. Kenya, Uganda, Zanzibar. Oh, wow, wow. Oh. Zanzibar, Tanzania. 
Zimbabwe and oh God, the north, the southeast. Really, uh, Congo. Botswana. Botswana. Namibia. So I've, I've been to a few countries already in Africa. Africa is fascinating. And that Africa was my last as an adult, mm -hmm. right, you know, mm -hmm. in the last few years. Mm -hmm. But separated by a number of decades, different trips. But the last few trips was doing it alone. And um, the adventure, I've been looking at my African map again, and I'm still thinking of uh -oh. I haven't been to Nigeria, Ghana, Lesotho, that, that area. Tunisia is... I've been like in and out of Tunisia. Uh -huh. But Tunisia and, and Egypt, very little difference. Burkina Faso. More uh -huh. towards Ghana and, and, and to, the, to the Ivory Coast and yeah. the French part, you know. Africa was colonized by the, the Europeans, so the various European cultures Influences. still are resident there. And they will quickly disappear, except for the Anglo culture will probably still be there. The last place I want to go to is South Africa. I bet you didn't know this, but there's more to come in the next episodes.